I'm going to quickly move to the second uh, trend, and this is uh, about this current generational change. This is a historic development in Africa. For the first time in three decades, we're starting to see uh, one generation pass to another. When I look at uh, African generations, what I tend to do is I, I move President Mugabe out of the list. He's born in 1920. He's sort of an outlier. And then you really have two cohorts. You have the Africans who were born in the 1930s and 40s, African leaders who were born in the 1930s and 40s. I call them the independence generation because that was their formative experience, the heady days of the independence. And then there's a second generation, the post-independence generation, born in 1950 and 60, whose formative experience is really uh, the sort of late 60s, early 70s, started to be the sort of the dark decades of Africa. Um, I'm borrowing a lot from generational theory here. Uh, it's the idea that generations have similar formative experiences, usually between the ages of 17 and 27, and that really helps shape their worldview, helps shape their decision making. It's, it's not a perfect theory. Uh, there are lots of exceptions and limitations, but when we're trying to look at a whole continent, I find it's a useful paradigm. So the independence generation grew up in a period where you saw uh, one or two leaders really change uh, the world around them. And these are leaders who, by their late teens, were participating in anti-colonial movements. Maybe they were joining pan-African groups in Europe, in Paris, in London. And when they have come to office, we've seen them really dominate or loom large over decision-making. In contrast, the post-independence uh, leaders saw an Africa with the coups, with civil wars, with the failure of democracy. Uh, President Mahama of Ghana does all the heavy lifting for me on this point. If you're familiar with his book, My First Coup d'etat, and other tales from the lost decade of Africa, uh, Mahama was 27 by the time, the, the, sort of that later end of that formative period, by the time there was five coups in Africa. And what we see with this generation is they tend to be much more sort of conscious of the institutional constraints on which they came to power, a little more consultative. So as we look ahead, I think we're going to see uh, this passage, again, first time in 30 years of this next generation, uh, probably a broadening of uh, elites who are involved in decision making because these leaders are more likely to want to vet decisions through their party or through the cabinet. Now, you may want to know what's going to happen after this generation. Uh, it's really difficult for two reasons. One, there's only one leader currently on Africa, in Africa who was born in 1970. That's President Joseph Kabila of the Congo. Uh, and the way that he came to power may not be a harbinger of, of what the, uh, the next generation is going to look like. The second point is this generation has had a lot of very diverse, to get to Steve's point, really diverse form of experiences. Witness Mandela get out of jail witnessed the advent of multi-party democracy, but at the same time, the Rwandan genocide, the wars in Congo, Black Hawk Down. So what they're gonna draw on to, to sort of be the sort of the key traits of their decision making, I think it's a little unclear, but my guess would be drawing from both uh, the independence and the post-independence generation.